probably in Rockport, Texas. We're already starting. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. I don't like to see people hurting. And I've been like that all my life. You know, from the time I was in school till, till now, I mean, I've just always tried to help people. And I'm sitting there watching and, you know, the only thing you ever saw in the news was Houston, Houston, Houston. Walking in downtown Houston and you can see. It is a colossal rescue effort. Fort Bend and Harris counties, including the city of Houston. Here yesterday, the water was up considerably closer to where we're standing right now. In it Dickinson, Texas, this is just outside of Houston. Yes, Houston was devastated. But Rockport took the eye. They took the storm surge. They took it all, you know. I knew Houston was getting plenty of help that I could see on the news. And I decided, you know, Houston's okay. They've, they've got plenty of help there because I'm seeing it. Let's go to Rockport. I think the best memories I have is we've done so many road trips. A lot of years I would ask when I got in the car, which way are we going? And the wife or one of the kids would point in that direction. And that's the direction we headed. It's going to be a long 24 hours. Actually, coming in here is a little bit scary. It wasn't the fact that, you know, I was afraid to come in and help. It was afraid that no matter how much we tried to set things up so that we would have everything in place when we came here, I knew we were coming in blind. Knowing that helped us because, you know, we had everything set up. We had people on the ground. We had things all lined up where people were supposed to have places for us and people for us to help. And uh, when we got there the first day, we we're supposed to be there at nine o'clock. They're going to be waiting for us, and uh, nobody showed. Amy's supposed to be back at like one thirty, so we're going to need to be on the horn with them and have to and stop them. So you got Mike's number? Try to stop them. And since then, we've gotten a better handle on the stuff. We know what we're doing now. I mean, I can't tell you all the houses that we went to and the stuff that we did, but we moved debris. We, tore down stuff, we cleaned up yards so that they could get the new mobile homes or whatever they were bringing in. in. But we've accomplished what we wanted to do. You know, we've prayed with people, uh, gotten Bibles to people, and literally saw what it meant to them that somebody, especially from out of their state, cared enough to come down here. And I'm gonna keep calling you guys, <laughs> and as we need stuff, we're gonna order it. Anything we have money for, we're gonna order it and have it sent, and we're gonna have it shipped right here to Home Depot or Ace, and we're gonna stay with you guys we're going to be back again and again and again until you guys are on your feet. We are not going to let go of you guys. Thank you. We couldn't have done this without the volunteers in Maricopa. And people just jumped right in. You know, Mary Grace, Grace, you know, all of them. 
they just dove right in and they started raising money, setting up fundraisers, gathering product, you know, getting into the trailer, sorting product. I mean, every day somebody was doing something. And then when we left, we left with the poor people. You know, we had uh, Lyle and his wife, Vianne Riggs, uh, Leon, Mike, Travis, George. You know, everybody just did what they needed to do at the time it needed done, and there was no questions asked. You look across the, the land here and you just, man, where do I start? It's just, there's stuff everywhere, and they're looking at it, and these are their personal effects just strung out across the county. I mean, it's just everywhere, and I can't, it almost brings me to tears to think about, like, having to pick up my own stuff or pick up my daughter's you know, teddy bears. We picked up that lot the other day. There's teddy bears, there's jewelry, there's, I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. And I, I can't imagine, put myself in their shoes. It's, in, I, it's really just, wow. Mike, he's like me, we're, he's younger than me, but a lot of our core values are the same, you know? We're, he's a hard worker, we want to get stuff done. And Travis and Jordan, they're some good working young men. I'm, I'm very glad to say they're with us because the younger generation don't work like these two boys have been working. They're young still, you know, they don't have that much experience. But they're, they're not afraid of jumping in and doing it. They're a total blessing, very professional and coming out here with their skills is what I needed because a lot of people in this situation put a chainsaw in their hand and they don't really necessarily have the skills to use one and it could be kind of dangerous and with them here I felt very comfortable because they uh, knew how to handle it, know how to be safe and they work very well together. When, when he's up there on the tree, he says, what does he say? Georgie. Georgie. Yep. He's got that little, that little mm -hmm. accent on him. Yep. Yeah. I think they've experienced a life-changing experience. You know, when we first came down here, I didn't have my doubts. I knew they were here to figure out something. But we've watched them transform within the first couple of days. And they've got more, I believe they've got more self-respect. They've got more gumption. They're willing to just dive in. You know, they're, they're, they're fabulous. I mean, they've, everybody here just worked so hard. I'm proud of everybody. Everybody that helped from the beginning to where we're at now. I think that anytime you reach out and serve and give of yourself, um, yes, you're helping somebody else, but ultimately it will change who you are on the inside. Um, it lets you realize that there's more to the world than your own little self-centered view. Um, and you start to see and you have an opportunity to help others. Um, and that can't help but make you a better person. The majority of this building is still standing. Surprise. So this is Luke 17, starting in verse 34. And I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And this is part of what we've seen, where one home is gone, and the other one is left. All as you see is the bottom floor of the house. Just There's nothing on it, just the bottom floor. But the two houses next to it, especially the one right after it, is just perfectly fine. And it's just like, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. You know, I create this world and everybody that's in it, I've got to protect them. You know, we came down with a mission and we stuck to our mission and we accomplished our mission. But uh, I just want to say, Maricopa, I love you.